Hello, gorgeous Aries, and welcome to September 2020. This is a really magical, quite powerful month. Uh, I think I say that probably every month, but I think this year is such an interesting, mysterious unfolding of the process. And in many ways, it brings about uh, different flavors and understanding um, all around. Of course, the big news this month is your ruling planet Mars in your sign is going retrograde on September 9th and will be continuing that retrograde until November 13th. And will actually be staying in your sign until the very beginning of January 2021. So we're beginning the inward journey for real here. And even as I'm talking about it to you right now, I just got full body chills. <sighs> okay, so Mars retrograde. Let's talk about it with Aries, right? Because this is obviously going to be personal. This is clearly going to be something that is about deep integration and rebirth for you all, especially because this is your ruling planet retrograding in your sign. This does not happen very often at all. I think the last time this happened, it was in the 80s. So yeah, we're doing some powerful things. Mars retrograde is going to be helping you to heal, to focus. And honestly, this is a huge rebirth for Aries. This is a huge recalibration of what it means to push hard for what you want, what it means to open up to your future. What it, This is a huge restart of an energetic cycle. This is a time where what you may have assumed was always going to be true for you or true for your process is going to be giving way to some different perspectives, some different ways of doing life. Um, some of these things I don't think are going to be big surprises. Uh, a lot of these things are going to be things that you've already been feeling as we've been having the pre-shadow phase with Mars in your sign, as we've been going through other transits that have also been very powerful. Some of this is not going to be a surprise for you at all all. You're going to be like, yes, I already knew this was coming. But what Mars is going to be doing is really integrating it, really bringing it home, taking a moment out of that direct, focused, visionary action to integrate it, to understand it. Um, and this is about deep recalibration of who you are becoming next with all the, the challenges and changes and the way the world feels the last nine months, the last six months that we have really been experiencing this huge change in life. This is a time when you can kind of start to understand yourself within that, understand who you're becoming within that context, and to really own your path moving forward. Um, of course, there's a lot of other powerful things going on this month. This is the month of the equinox, and the sun moves into your opposing sign of Libra the same day that the equinox happens, which this year is September 22nd. So this is... This is a powerful time of looking deeply inside, of being really clear with how you want to put your body, your mind, your soul forward in the world. A time where, yeah, maybe you aren't feeling the kind of go, 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 I have to go all day, every day and make sure things happen. Maybe that won't be coming up for you for a little bit. Ace of Swords, clarity, big clarity. But that doesn't mean that you're actually less aware or less effective. It just means that you're doing things differently. Nine of Wands, oh my gosh, how fitting. Yes, this is part of our healing right here. This is part of your Mars or your Chiron and Aries as well, which is also happening right now. And that's a long transit that we're working with, my Aries loves. But, and you know what? I didn't even wink. I didn't even do the wink today. I see you. I see you. Um, yeah, so this is part of that integration. This is part of the healing. There is deep healing going on for Aries in September, and I love that. I love that. I think healing always happens as an ongoing process, but sometimes we just get a great infusion of it. In fact, even when I'm looking at Virgo season, before we hit mirror season, before we hit the equinox, we have a full moon in Pisces, in your 12th house. This is so healing. This is so integrating. This is like letting the waters of healing and change wash over you, allow you to transmute, transcend, see from a different perspective. 
Eight of Pentacles, love it. This is also Virgo season. So this is all about how you're connecting with your body, your routine, who you are in the world, how you wanna move through life. This is such beautiful energy for integration. Venus is also gonna be in Leo this month, which is beautiful for you. This lights up your heart chakra. It lights up who you really are, you know, who is really in their areas. Three of Cups. I love it. I actually really love this energy for you. There's a lot of support here in different facets of your life. In fact, we got one of each element in your four cards today. And that to me speaks to a well-rounded series of events happening, right? There being some that's about this deep integration, maybe even some grief, some reconnection with self, some healing. Uh, some social connection, some new project ideas coming through, and some really deep clarity on questions you may have been having about your purpose in life and what you're doing here that have been looming for several months and are now coming to full fruition. So this is a really powerful time. One other thing to mention is both Jupiter and Saturn in the course of this month are starting their forward motion again. They are finishing their retrogrades in Capricorn, and both Jupiter and Saturn, you know, now that they are going to be direct starting in September, they're going to finish up both of their transits in Capricorn, in your fellow cardinal sign, in a sign that represents for you who you are in this world, what you want to what you want to build. And I often find, especially when we're working with Saturn and Capricorn energy, that we only understand what we've learned from those transits when they're over. So we're starting to get to the graduation point here, where we're taking the wisdom we have learned from these longer transits and moving forward, moving on in life. Uh, and there is a tingling sense here in, in September in general that now is a time, you know, with the equinox, this is a rebalancing energy. And the equinoxes, to me, are some of the most powerful days of the year. In some ways, I find them more powerful than the solstices because they are this equal part. And I'm getting shivers again. They are equal parts opening to what is next and closing out what has been left behind. And yes, we do that with the solstice as well. We do that with the moons. But there's something about the equinox where we are being asked to open up our vulnerable, dreaming, wishing self to the next phase of life, to the next year, you know, until we get to the next equinox in March. We are opening ourselves up to it. There's a tenderness and vulnerability there. And there's also this understanding of loss as we transform. And as you're integrating and healing and getting to know who you are now, Aries, that process is going to feel really real. Of course, you are the other equinox uh, that begins in your season. So you are always tied to the equinoxes as well. It's a very personal moment of shift in the year for you, the equinoxes. So let's talk through this because I love Ace of Swords for you. I do think there's an understanding going on here. Things that have felt muddled, things that have felt uncertain are starting to make more sense. And I often find too with Ace of Swords, yes, it is that cutting action that happens when we know what our right choice is, we know what the right answer is, and yes, it means that other things are then cut out of the running. It's also, you know, that you choose something and that in and of itself creates a certain level of freedom, right? And it's just owning fully who you are now, not who you've been in the past, not how you would have fixed these things in the past, but who you are now. And I would also say this is really interesting. While retrogrades often do bring about some reflection and admittedly, you all, I didn't even mention this, Mercury moves into your sign this month and we'll begin a pre-shadow phase conversation with your sign on the 23rd of the month. Um, and part of Mercury retrograde, which won't start until October, is going to be in your sign. So keep that in mind, but we're not working with that until October, so it's just there. Mercury is doing some work with you. While retrogrades can be about bringing up the past, I think Mars retrograde isn't so much about that. Mars retrograde wants us to understand why we do what we do, and in Aries, wants us to do it from a place not of pain or of hurt or of injury, but to do it from a place of passion, excitement, hope. Now, here's the thing. Ace of Swords is illuminating your path forward. There's something that gets clarified here right up front, right away this month. And that is beautiful. And what does that bring about but our dear old friend, Nine of Wands, what I have nicknamed the World Weary Warrior. And I actually associate this deeply with the work we're doing with Mars and Chiron, or um, Chiron and Aries. 
but I also associate this with a deep part of Aries energy often. Not all the time. I'm not going to like be putting this on every Aries that ever was. But the word, you, Aries, we've talked about this before, your tenderness, the fact that you're always on the front lines. Some of you have this, this part of you that just cannot stop keeping guard on what has happened in the past and keeping guard for yourself, watching out for yourself and, and feeling tense and rigid and holding it all together and not allowing yourself to open up. And, you know, this part of ourselves often shows up right when we are opening to what is next, right? It's, it wants to protect us from opening up. It wants to protect us from making the same mistakes or getting injured or not keeping an eye on our back right? It wants to live in old battles because the imagery here in this card is very specifically about a warrior at the end of a war, the end of a battle. And the battle is over. Everybody else has gone home, uh, but they're still there. You know, it has a lot to do with the Im It's an imagery of, honestly, PTSD. And we all have that in different ways in our lives, but, and it, we, it's good to recognize it's there. And if that voice will come up, that part of ourselves will come up when we are opening to something new. It's very natural for that to happen. It's also helpful sometimes to just know, oh, that will come up. It doesn't mean you're making wrong choices. It doesn't mean you're being careless. It means that in growth and in change and in recalibration and in healing and in acknowledging our healing, we also sit with the parts of ourselves that are still in that battlefield. Um, but here's the thing, you all. This is what I love about this area. I love this reading so much because yes, the nine of wands is there to say it is a time to heal. It is a time to listen deeply to your soul at this time. Mars is not in high speed action, let's make everything happen tomorrow mode. Mars is in integration mode, which gives you the chance to rest into that. How beautiful is that? I love this for you. I love this for all of us, but especially for you. And look what support is there. Work harmony, creative harmony, and deep friendship harmony. I think these two represent some really big themes for you in the coming months and years. So we're going to zoom out a little bit here with these messages because these are not just necessarily about September in and of itself, though you may find themes both of successful work projects coming about and of, of jubilation and connection and friendship and creativity. These are very creative cards that could absolutely be a huge part of your September. I think Mars retrograde is also great for your creativity for listening to your soul and what it has to share and give to you. This can be an amazing time of new ideas, new ways of doing things, new ways of thinking about your talents, your gifts, your abilities, your modalities. It's such a beautiful transit in so many ways. It resets all of us. It resets us completely from the 80s. Those of us who are alive in the 80s, we're getting a whole reset from our very young, you know, from a totally different time. This is a time of great creativity, and this is also tapping into what is ahead for you when we close out the Mars transit here. Mars is going to move on in the new year to Taurus, and what's going to be, what are we going to have connected in with at that time? It's a great question to ask right now. What is it that we will have chosen to master, to listen, to heal, to connect with? Where will we have put that driven, determined, clear, crystal, crystalline, Martian energy that in Aries, when we put that into ourselves, what comes out from that process? Something really powerful, I tell you right now, something potent and beautiful and empowered uh, and sensuous, right? And sensuality in the sense of letting our fullness of our desires and our dreams and our hopes and our creativities shine and speak and emit radio signals uh, all around us, right? Re emit frequency. I have an invocation for you all for this equinox as well as this Mars retrograde that I have written up to share with you here right now. A little prayer, a little set of affirmations to take us into this sacred time of year. May this season of reflection offer new pathways, new guidance, and renewed life force. May I feel whole. May I feel loved. May I feel clear 
and incisive. May I be gentle with myself as I change shape. That's an important one to remember at the end there, to be gentle with yourself as you change shape. Be gentle with this part of yourself, the nine of wands. The one that maybe sees life through the lenses of the, the worry and the fear, right? The times when that actually kept you safe the temptation to use those skills in this time now and to remember that the surest way to let those voices calm is to not cast them aside and lock them in a side room, but to hear them out and say, you're okay. It's a great time for self-parenting this month as well. I will say that for everybody right now. Um, I'm going to go a lot deeper into Mars retrograde over on Patreon. We're going to we're going to be doing a lot of activations around Mars retrograde because I think it's an extremely important transit and one that is going to sh help us change this world and shape the way that we do things next. So if you're looking for more support and a beautiful community, I'd love to see you on Patreon. I know some of you are already there with me and I love you so much. Thank you so much. And you can find me on my Instagram and my website at Sarah Verba and Pink Loon's gorgeous jewelry on her Etsy shop and her her sun catchers are amazing. Uh, all of that I'll leave below in the description box as well. I love you all so much. Have a beautiful mirror season. Have a beautiful equinox. And we will usher in some really deep healing during this Mars retrograde.